Alright guys, today we're going to be talking about how we can go about writing expressions in radical form and then simplifying, alright? So we have talked about this um, in past videos, so this should be kind of a refresher, but we'll go through it regardless. So here we have our expression, right? And notice on our exponent we have a fraction. Now whenever you're given a exponent and it is a fraction, that means you have the ability to also write it as a radical. Now, your bottom number or your denominator will always tell you what type of root it's going to be. Okay, so for example, if I had the square root, let's just do um, square root of 7, right? Well, I can write this using an exponent by doing the following. Okay, and that there is going to be the same thing. Now, notice where this 2 comes from. This 2, really, when you have a square root, is really a 2 here, right? So what's happening is your denominator is telling you what the root is going to be. So for example, just by looking at this, when I go ahead and put it into its radical form, I know it's going to be a cubed root because it's 3, right? So when I go ahead and write this, you're going to do the following. All right, so let's do this in another color. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to bring the 3 down, so I'll have a cubed root of negative 125, and this will all be in parentheses to the second power. So that numerator stays where it's at. Okay, so it's only your denominator that's coming down, and it's going to tell you what root you're dealing with. So right now I have the cube root of negative 125. So we need to say to ourselves, well, what number, when we multiply it by itself, three times will give us negative 125. All right, so again, what number will we multiply by itself three times will give us negative 125? Well, that's gonna be negative five, right? Negative five times negative five times negative five is negative 125. So the cube root of negative 125 is going to be negative five, okay? And then we have squared, and to just simplify this down, we have negative 5 squared, which is going to be 25, right? And this here is our final answer. Okay, so our final answer is 25. Let's try a couple more examples. So let's go ahead and erase this, and we'll try a couple more. All right, so our next one is 64. the one-third. Now again, remember my exponent here, I'm dealing with a fraction, so if we're dealing with a fraction, we know that we can write it as a radical, okay? My base being 64. So just by looking at this, I know that when I write it in its radical form, I'm going to be dealing with a cube root, and that is because the denominator is telling me, okay, what it's going to be. So let's go ahead and write it as a radical. So we'll have the cube root of 64, and if you want, you can put this in parentheses all to the first power. All right, but we know that that's going to be meaningless in the end. Anything to the first power will be itself. So what is going to be the cube root of 64? So again, what number times itself three times will give you 64? Okay, and that's going to be 4, right? 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So we have 4 to the first power, and 4 to the first power is just going to be 4. Okay. So there is our answer. All right, let's try a couple more. So we'll have four, and we'll have two to the five over two. Now look what happens here. So we have four to the five over two. So again, we're dealing with an exponent that's a fraction, so we know that we can write it as a radical, but notice what's on our denominator, there's a two. So we know that this is going to be a square root. Okay, so we'll have the following. Now, when you write the square root, you actually don't have to write the 2. It's just assumed that the 2 is there. If you want to write the 2, you can. I'm not going to write the 2, just so you can get familiar of um, looking at the square root without it. Okay, but just know that when you write the square root, there really is a 2 here, a root of 2. Okay, so then we'll have 4. And then to the 5th. So again, you can say to yourself, what number times itself 2 times, right? We'll give you 4. Okay, so we know now that the square root of 4 is just going to be 2. So we can write 2 here. 
and then to the fifth power, so two to the fifth power, so two times two times two times two times two, we know it's going to be 32, right? So two to the fifth power is 32, and that is going to be your final answer, okay? All right, let's look at one more here. So we have the following, 625, and this will be two, three, four, all right, so looking at this, again, our exponent, we're dealing with a fraction. Look what's on the bottom. We have a 4. So this is going to be a root of 4, okay? So let's go ahead and write this. So we'll have a 4 here, and then we'll have 625. This will all be to the third power. So we need to ask ourselves what number times itself 4 times will give us 625. All right, so again, what number? times itself four times will give us 625. Well, that's going to be five, right? Five times five times five times five will be 625. Okay, so our answer here is gonna be five. So we have five to the third power and five to the third power is simply going to be 125, okay? And this problem is now complete, all right? And that is it. That's how you go about writing expressions in radical form and then simplifying.